In this presentation, we will explain the various cutting methods of Wagyu beef used in Japan to make the most efficient use of this high-quality meat. We have here a side, which is a carcass split properly and safely down the middle at a meat processing center. We are going to separate it into the primal cuts. These are the bone-in forequarter and bone-in hindquarter, bone-in plate and bone-in hindquarter without the plate, and the bone-in loin and bone-in round. Each primal cut is deboned and everything is divided into a total of 14 subprimal cuts. This is the chuck eye roll. It is divided into the chuck eye log, chuck flap, neck, and chuck cap. The neck is divided from the chuck eye roll between the third and fourth neck bones. Remove all blood clots, sinew and heavy sinew from the chuck eye roll and trim the fat. Slice one third of the chuck eye roll from the neck side. The left hand catches the meat as it falls away, while the right hand folds it in front, keeping the surface side visible. This makes the meat more presentable as a product. The chuck eye roll is well suited for sukiyaki and yakiniku. Divide the chuck eye roll into the ribeye roll side and the center side. Next, divide the center side into the chuck flap and chuck eye log. Insert the knife and cut from the bottom side of the rib. Now, trim the chuck flap by removing the fat from its surface and the sinew underneath the fat. The trimmed chuck flap is then turned into a retail cut, which is used in shabu shabu and yakiniku. Trim the chuck eye log from the rib side. Underneath the rib side of the chuck eye log is a part called the chuck cap. The chuck cap is removed from the rib side of the chuck eye log along the connective tissue. After removing the cap, the rib side of the chuck eye log can be used for steak or yakiniku. We will move on to the neck. Remove the silver skin and cartilage from the neck and put it in the slicer. The neck is suited for hot pot and stew. We will continue on to the brisket. The brisket is separated into the chuck short rib and brisket. These can be easily separated from the back neck side of the rib. This is the chuck short rib. To trim the chuck short rib, first remove the rib finger, neck, and rib end.
Then remove the silver skin, fat, and sinew on the reverse side and form the retail cut. Chuck short rib can be used for yakiniku. We will now move on to brisket trimming. First remove the pectoral. Then remove the fat and blood clots to complete the trimming. Now we will form a retail cut for the next side of the brisket. Put it in the slicer for the next side and cut into thin slices. Brisket is suited for stir frying and stewing. The shoulder clod is composed of five parts. The upper oyster blade, top blade, chuck tender, bolar blade, and enconius muscle. First remove the chuck tender from the shoulder clod. Next, separate the upper oyster blade from the shoulder clod. Be sure to remove the heavy sinew before separating these parts. The upper oyster blade is separated by cutting between the bolar blade and top blade. This is the upper oyster blade. It is made into a retail cut by removing the central, surface, and inside sinew and blood veins. Before cutting off the top blade from the shoulder clod, the upper limb must be removed. Then cut away the top blade from the shoulder clod. Cut along the sinew right to the bottom. Trim the top blade by removing the silver skin and surface sinew. First, cut out the steak meat. Next, divide the top blade into two parts along the center sinew. Remove the center sinew. The edge of the top blade can be cut into steak in blocks, and the other parts can be used as yakiniku and sliced meat. This part is the chuck tender. Remove the silver skin, sinew, and fat. Then remove the sinew from the head side and trim. The quality of the meat from the center to the rear portion is tough and should be sliced or used for stewing. The meat from the head side to the center is good for yakiniku, shabu shabu, and sukiyaki. This is the bolar blade. Remove the sinew on the surface, center and side of the bolar blade, and trim. The meat quality of the upper limb side is tough, thus the portions to the center can be used for yakiniku and blocks. The other portions are sliced to be used in shabu shabu and similar types of cooking. This is the aconius muscle. Turn the enconius muscle into a retail cut after trimming the membrane lipid on its surface. The enconius muscle, upper limb and upper oyster blade are sliced together and used for beef stroganoff, sukiyaki, and yakiniku. This part here is called the upper plate. The upper plate is cut into the flat meat, head plate, and short rib. The flat meat is easier to cut if you remove its flap first. It is trimmed by first removing the sinew and fat on the surface. Flat meat is best used as diced steak.
This is the head plate. It is cut away straight from the second rib. This part of the head plate is called the rib finger. Remove the rib finger and silver skin to form the retail cut. The head plate itself is cut thickly and used for yakiniku. It is also sliced for sukiyaki, beef bowl, and hot pot. We will go back to the rib finger. Insert your knife between the meat folds and open it up to create the retail cut. Rib fingers are well suited for ordinary barbecue, spit roasting, and yakiniku. Cut off the fat on the surface and reverse side of the short rib to form a retail cut. Be careful when trimming beneath the silver skin so as not to create any holes in the very thin meat. It is rolled and cut to be cooked as rolled steak or can be sliced and used in ordinary barbecue and sukiyaki. This part is the lower plate. Remove the sinew and cut into the inside skirt, flank steak, and short plate. This is the inside skirt. And here is the flank steak. After trimming the inside skirt, cut it at an angle into blocks to form the retail cut. The inside skirt is good for yakiniku and beef bowl. After trimming the flank steak, cut it into half to create the retail cut. Flank steak is used for yakiniku and diced steak. Trim the short plate and cut it vertically into three to form the retail cut. It can be sliced and used in beef bowl and shabu shabu, or you can cut it into blocks for yakiniku. This part is called the ribeye roll. First, remove the fat from the surface and trim it by removing the fat on the top side of the intercostal muscle. Next, remove the thick sinew known as heavy sinew. This part here is called the rib cap. When slicing the ribeye roll, make sure you slice it with the rib cap still attached. Sliced ribeye roll can be used for sukiyaki and shabu shabu. Next, peel off the rib cap from where you remove the heavy sinew. To complete the rib cap, cut away the fat from its surface. The rib cap is good for yakiniku, but it can also be used in tempura. Trim the rest of the ribeye roll by removing the fat from the surface. Ribeye roll is suited for steak and can be sliced for sukiyaki and shabu shabu. Strip loin is the most common of all beef cuts. First, cut into the fat on the back to about five centimeters and then remove it.
After that, make it into a retail cut by removing the muscle fiber from the upper part of the back. Remove all blood clots in discolored meat and trim the fat. Strip loin is especially suited for steak and can also be sliced for yakiniku and shabu shabu. This part here is known as the tenderloin. Remove the surface fat from the tenderloin, which was separated from the bone in loin, and gently trim it. Remove the silver skin, sinew, and blood veins from the reverse side. Tenderloin is best suited for steak, piccata, and stroganoff. This is the top round. First, remove the top round cap from the top round. This is the top round and its cap. Next, remove the sinew and fat from its surface. Then separate it into the sartorius and pecneus muscles. Then cut it into blocks so that it can be used in yakiniku and Chinese pepper steak. In addition, it can be sliced and used as rolled meat. This is the pecneus. It contains a part Japanese refer to as the megane. Be sure to shape the blood vessels in it neatly. It is cut into blocks for steak, diced steak, and yakiniku. It can also be sliced and steamed in a basket. Trim the top round cap by removing the sinew and fat from its surface, and the sinew on the reverse side. Slice it so it can be used in beef bowl. This part is the knuckle. First, separate it into the tri-tip and knuckle muscle. Here is the tri-tip and the knuckle muscle. Remove the connective tissue from the surface of the tri-tip, insert your knife at an angle, and cut it into two parts. You can cut it into blocks for yakiniku or slice it for shabu shabu. The knuckle muscle is separated into the inside knuckle muscle, knuckle main muscle, and outside knuckle muscle. After removing the fat and sinew on the surface, insert your knife between the knuckle main muscle and inside knuckle muscle on the tri-tip side. Then separate the inside knuckle muscle along the sinew on the knuckle main muscle side. These parts of the knuckle muscle are called the inside knuckle muscle, the knuckle main muscle, and the outside knuckle muscle. Trim the inside knuckle muscle by removing the sinew and fat. Cut it into blocks for barbecue and diced steak, or you can slice it for use in beef bowl. Next, we will separate the knuckle main muscle. Insert the knife from the outside knuckle muscle side and cut along the sinew. To trim the knuckle main muscle, separate it into two along the center sinew. 
Then remove the center sinew and cut into blocks for yakiniku. You can also cut it into thick blocks for use as steak or slice it for shabu shabu. This is the outside knuckle muscle. Turn the outside knuckle muscle into a retail cut by removing the sinew and connective tissue on surface. The portion to the front of the screen is tough, so you have to cut into slender blocks along the fold. Cut the outside knuckle muscle into slender blocks for use as small steaks and for yakiniku. You can also slice it for shabu shabu and hot pot cooking. This part is called the top sirloin. It is divided into the top sirloin cap, sirloin butt, gluteus medius muscle, piriformis muscle or pope's eye, and the gluteus profundus muscle. First divide the top sirloin cap and sirloin butt along the fascia in fat. On the left side is the sirloin butt and the top sirloin cap is on the right. Remove the fat and sinew from the top sirloin cap and cut along the sinew on the bottom round side. The meat quality on the bottom round side is tough and is cut for other types of cooking not mentioned yet. Slice it for shabu shabu and sukiyaki. You can also cut it into slender blocks for yakiniku. Here we have the sirloin butt. Remove the sinew from its surface first, and then trim it. Next, remove the gluteus medius. Then continue trimming. This is the piriformis muscle, or Pope's eye, which you will now remove. Take away the sinew from its surface. The piriformis muscle is suited for yakiniku and diced steak. Next, separate the sirloin butt and the gluteus profundus muscle along the center sinew. Remove the center sinew and horizontal sinew at the lower part. Cut it into blocks for use in roast beef and steaks or slice it for sukiyaki and beef stroganoff. This is called the bottom round and we will divide it into four cuts. First, separate the heel from the bottom round. Trim the fat on the heel and separate the flexor digitorum superficilis muscle from it. Cut away the eye of the round from the bottom round. The outside flat will be left. This part is the eye of round. Eye of round is much tougher than it looks, so you have to shape it after removing the connective tissue and fat from its surface. Eye of round is best suited for shabu shabu and yakiniku. This is the outside flat. Separate it into two pieces where the meat folds differ. It is sliced into large pieces to be used as rolled meat.
This is the heel. This is the flexor digitorum superficialis muscle. Trim the heel by removing the membrane, heavy sinew, inner sinew, and fat from its surface. If you remove the flexor digitorium superficialis muscle, there is a tender part which is good for yakiniku, or you can slice it for beef bowl and hot pot. On the left is the fore shank, and the hind shank is on the right. Both are shaped in the same way by first removing the heavy sinew from its surface and trimmed by removing the fat. Remove the sinew on the surface and on the reverse side. Both shanks are suited for use in minced beef, red wine stew, and tomato stew.